Hi, Julie. Good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. You should be able to hear me. Hello? We can hear you. Okay. Hey, Russ. Hi, guys. Now you can see me. Hey. Yeah, I was going to say, are you faceless tonight? <laughs> All right, we'll give it a few minutes. Uh, Rob is not joining us and I don't believe Sue's joining us. I'm gonna text Sierra, see where she is. I think she's coming on now. Okay. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. You want to put up the agenda, Julie? Hello? Hello? Here we go. Welcome, everybody, to the regular meeting of the Roxbury Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission for June 25th, 2024. It's already June. <laughs> okay, so call to order. John, I'll start with you. John Smoliga. Sarah Gorglione. Rob Oregon. Kathy Roz. Chris Haggerty. That's it, right? So I'm going to see uh, Kathy for Sue. Kathy, you going to be here all night, or it should it shouldn't be a long meeting. Yeah, I I um I can be late to my eight thirty, but um yeah, you should be good. That's okay, good. thanks. It should be an eight o'clock. I'll keep it moving. Good. Say so, um, if it's all night, I won't be here. <laughs> Rob, Rob Russ, I, you, I, you're going to you're going to you're gonna gonna leave, leave, right? Yes, I am. OK, so I'll see Chris for you when you leave. Um, and we have Sierra, so we have a quorum. Kathy is now seated for Sue and we have a quorum. So approval of the minutes of the regular meeting from May 28th, 2024. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Approval of a special meeting from June 11th, 2024. I wasn't there, so I'll abstain. But do I have a motion? Motion to I'll approve. Vote. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Or aye, I abstain. Aye. But, aye. Okay. 
Motion carries 401. We'll move on to old business. And me and my buddy Kathy spent a nice day together going around town, uh, looking at all these sites. And then we took our two dogs to the river, and that, that just was so much fun. So <laughs> thanks for the day, Kathy. Um, Kyle Conway, we went up there. Uh, we looked at what's going on, what's been done. Uh, he, he claims he's done. Uh, just wanted to clean up a little. Um, I had no issues with what he did other than he should have gotten the permit before he did what he did. Kathy? Uh, I don't have a comment, Russ. Okay. So this is an after-the-fact application. I'll make a motion to approve it. And I abstain from this, Russ? Yes. Yeah, I, I I really I want to abstain as well. I think you still have a quorum. Okay. So, do I have a motion from anybody? So, is, is this a regulated activity? It is because of the intermittent stream. Yes. Okay, so I'll move. I'll move to approve this as a regulated activity. Second. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have John stepped off and one abstention. So motion carries. Next. Eighty-three Squire Road. Uh, Vince, who has a very green thumb, um, really beautiful property. They're proposing to put a sitting area down by the stream. You can see it's a patio with a sitting wall. Uh, there's a couple trees around there. It's not heavily forested. Um, I think it's a good plan, Kathy. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely have easy access. There's already, I don't know if we can see it on this map, there's already access to the spot. It is, um, you know, within um, the 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 setback or the, the buffer. Um, and, and I don't know that there's... Uh, opportunity to move it back I, I guess the one I, I did have a question about the the high water mark that it's measured from is that in fact the high water mark right yes. the distance from the river because yeah. I, I know we were there there was quite a bit of distance right between the recent high water mark from recent um, rain activity right um it's not in a it's not in a floodplain. Isn't and, isn't and the bank of the street? Are, we, we can't regulate setback areas unless there's a direct impact to the stream. This is a flat area. I don't see how the stream could be impacted by a patio on a flat area that's next to the stream. What's the elevation of this patio above the stream? Roughly? Well, Probably four feet, four or five okay. feet. It's a very, that whole area from uh, just beyond the house down is all flat. Mm -hmm. So, so Russ, you're saying it's, it goes up about, about a four foot rise from the water level to where this patio is? There's, there's, I'd say by my eye, there's a four foot elevation change. It's very subtle. Somebody says four feet, that sounds like a lot, but it really isn't in that in that kind of distance. It's about uh, 25, 30 feet from the stream, right? About 50 feet from the stream. So it's 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 a good distance. Is that it? Is it 50 feet from the stream? Is is that it? Is there an engineer here representing this or just the uh, applicant?
Maybe Can everyone on... hear me? Yeah, Hi. there you are, Vince. Hi, I'm Vince Sinopoli. I don't know if you could see me, but can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. We Great. Can hear you. Yeah. Okay. What was the question? How far from the stream is it? Um, it is <clears throat> on the plan. We have 42 feet from the, the edge. Okay. From the high water mark? Correct. Yes. Okay. There's your answer, Kathy. Yeah, 42 feet. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And do you have the rise from the high water mark to the patio? Yeah, we're just about 49 inches. Yeah, so, four feet. Thanks. You're welcome. No, I, I don't have any other comments. Um, It's really, um, you know, I think there's exi existing access from the side of the house. Um, there you know, the plan was um, to, I think, use that existing access or not taking down any trees. Um, it's very minimal disturbance, if I recall the discussion. Um, yes, I, I put a letter of intent as well in the package, so it explains that. Okay. I any agree. Questions? Any questions from anybody else? No? I'll look for a motion. Kathy? Uh, oh, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve the patio at 83 Squire Road as a regulated activity. I'll second. Good. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Bye. Thank you, Thank Vince. You. Thank you for your time. Good night. Good night. Okay, where are we now? We're on Pickett Road. Um, it just goes to show you, you need to go look at a site <laughs> to really understand it. So, uh, Julie, could you focus more in just on the, the driveway area, you know, more on where the house is gonna be? This is a very tight site. Um, the uh, everybody who drives to Chippewa Valley School, you know, you go under those uh, electric lines bef just before you get into the Washington side, which is at the culvert. Um, this is on the right hand side, so it's on the other side from the school. It's not near. It's not across from the school. This is down the road um, across from an existing house. But I, I thought it was on the left-hand side. It's on the right-hand side. So that driveway drops down. Yes. And that wetland you see is the huge swamp area that is just huge. You know, it's it goes, it's a very large wetland area. It's the source of Moosehorn Brook. Um, I don't know if the swamp has a name, um, but just to try to give everybody a sense of where this is at. So this is all a hillside basically, but it flattens out right at the bottom and then it goes down a little ways again to the wetland. And Sierra and I uh, had a little trouble because I'm glad that they cleared it because it's very overgrown. Um, the first thing is, is there drainage 
proposed where the Heather, you're here, right? Yep. Hi, yes, Heather. Steph, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Is there drainage proposed where the driveway joins the road? Because that's a pitch down. It pitches and down. And our, our thought of this is because it does pitch down, we have, you know, we're not putting anything on the side of the septic. There is a catch basin at the end of that driveway. So we're kind of using sheet flow. And then there is a catch basin that actually, if you zoom in, you can see it at proposed the bottom of the driveway um, to collect that rainwater, but not in the okay, beginning. So, no. so there will be a catch basin put in to catch that. Yes. If you look at the yes, because I, I would worry that water would go down that driveway and cause all kinds of problems. Yeah, and there's there's cultic units to collect that rainwater or any kind of you know spill off in the back. If you could look there, there are two. There. You know what that tower is? Which where are we looking? Where it says tower, we Sierra and I saw it. We were wondering what that was. It I looked like oh, it's a it looks like a hunting. hunting. Is it the electrical lines or is that? I know it's that looks that looks like an ever source easement. Yeah, it could be going right through there. Yeah, that's all for the electric lines. But there's yeah. some kind of structure there that's all overgrown. I was just wondering. It's, it's so know. hard. It was so hard for us to get back there when we only be able to where we septic test is really what we saw. So how, how big is the house? Um, square foot. It's five bedroom, but square feet. Feet wise, I think I could scale this right what, now. What's the footprint, in other words? It is a. About 30 by 65. Pardon? 35? 30 by 65, and that includes the porches. Oh, okay. 30 by 60. Yeah. Okay. About 65. Okay. So that's like a 2,000 square foot footprint. Yeah. I was waiting for Rob on that. <laughs> yes. No, but there, 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 there is quite a bit. There is quite a bit more. I mean, there's the the future pool, the proposed barn, yes. the proposed future shed. Correct. Okay. I mean, it's a very it tight area I know um but we're trying to work with I mean it's a almost an eight um acre lot and it's just we only have about an well, not even an acre I think we have like an acre we're built a little bit over an acre an acre and a half maybe we're building to do construction on we're trying you know because there's nothing more <laughs> the rest is all pretty much wetlands where are those leader drains going into that same Coltec unit. Pardon? Into the Coltec unit, the same. Oh yeah, okay. Yep. Sarah, do you have anything? No, I'm just, um, yeah, it's a tight um, spot. I just, I don't know, I can't remember where the pool would go how that would work but well, but we're not approving the pool oh we're not the, we're just where uh, or, i i think we're we're only proposing uh, approving the the driveway the proposed house coltic system septic well i mean he would like the pool he it should have proposed the pool, pool. The five four. Oh, okay. That's why yes. this. I, I, I should, it should be. It, it should have been applied for. Ralph put future. It should have been proposed. I'm sorry about that. That's a... okay. No, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, it's a little tight, but I mean, it still falls within. I think it's it's fine within the rules and regulations. I I I have a little bit of a problem. I, with the pool. I mean, it's a, okay. Okay. Um. Just that, you know, we need to know the location of the pool equipment, yep. any discharge, what kind of pool equipment, don't okay. you think, Russ? Yes. You can't okay. be backwashing into a wetland. Oh, no, definitely not. I understand. <laughs> and what's the distance of the pool to the wetland? 39 feet. That's a problem because chlorine breaks down at 50 feet. Okay. So I mean, if I have to, if we, I have to move the pool, to, we could figure that one out. There's actually a general permit by deep 
for pool discharges. They have to be 50 feet from any stream or wetland. Got it. I'll let Ralph know that. It looks like you could tuck it up, you know, back where the house is. Um, That's what I was looking for, the repose soil. Area yeah, like is, that area. Kind of yeah. shifted in, in that area. And yep. uh, maybe flip that proposed topsoil um, area up further. Uh, that's a, something and definitely. Have, have the engineer take a look at the driveway okay. drainage because I'm worried about water coming down with the storms we've been having. We need to start engineering different. We've we talked a little bit about maybe rip wrapping because the sides of the driveway. So maybe it has a little bit, you know, it dissipates, has a little more sheet flow going through, you know, the yard. And, you know, so it kind of channels it. So it's not as quick like that flash flood kind of deal. I don't know if that's something Ralph and I were talking about maybe doing on, you know, the end. Yeah, well, because you have a tight site, I know. Um, you really have to, you have to plan and, and have all kinds of, um, you know, extra things for okay. And one of those things is we need better drainage control on the driveway. Have okay. the engineer think of one of those flash floods like this whole week. But, um, um, you know, the rain we've had this week that came out of nowhere and uh, dumped a lot of water in certain areas, in certain areas it didn't. Yes. Uh, but I'm thinking, you know, get one of those heavy thunderstorms, all that water is going to go right down that driveway and cause these poor people problems that they don't want to have. Correct. So if we build better drainage now, we solve them future problems. Okay. I'll definitely have him relook at that driveway drainage, the pool equipment, and then move the pool 50 feet away from wetlands. Yeah, now the area between the house and the road, all that's going to be cleared, right? I think that's what, what Jim is thinking is clearing the site. So for at least they have some kind of yard, you know, because we're not, you know, he can't, he's not clearing anything really much to in the back, only where the pool area is and up to that. Um, so yeah, I think you'd have to clear some of that side yard. Yeah. I mean, I can, so, like I'll talk to Jim and verify. Yeah. Here's the thing. When we, when we prove things, we don't like to have things up in the air. I agree. We, we like it very, very understanding. Yep. So if there is an issue, nobody's saying, well, we didn't say we were going to do that or this. So you need to have on this plan limits of disturbance. Yep. There needs to be a limit of disturbance line of, you know, during construction, including construction, we aren't going to go over this line. Definitely. We need to, uh, I see the silt fence, so we have erosion control. We need to understand where what's going to be cleared, where the lawn is going to be. If there's going to be lawn, show it now. It's not that you can't have it. It's that you need to have it now. Now, yep. all, all the brush between the road and the house, all overgrown. It's all evasive species. It's not anything special. So, you know, it's not a problem to clear that, but it is a hill. So we need to understand if it is cleared, when it gets cleared, it's going to be like a patient on an operation table. It's going to be open to erosion. So we need to understand how that's going to be handled until it's stabilized. So uh, would, we, would we ever, would we ever to, um, we have like a, sorry, we do activation too. We have a brush hog. Will we be able to chip in place for stabilization, putting wood chips to stabilize that edge from the okay. road? Side down? So put all that on the plan. So, okay. you know, if, if you move to California, we don't have to come and find you, you know. So, I'm not going anywhere, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> you never know nowadays. <laughs> California isn't where I'd go. <laughs> no. Russ? So, yes? Would you mind if I made a suggestion? Um, oh, not at all. We're looking at about 15 feet elevation drop from where the driveway meets the road to where the catch basin is at the bottom. Um, and I'm assuming that area between the house and the barn is going to be somewhat level. So we're probably at a 15% slope for the, for the travel portion of the driveway. But if they moved the entrance of the driveway a little further down, you know, maybe 70 or 80 feet down picket, They'd have almost a flat driveway and wouldn't have to worry about any of that washout. I've, I've mentioned that. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the only thing I mean, see... look at the contours. 
the contours are telling you where you should go with it. And it is yeah, but I, I think down the contours. It's he's right. If you go eighty feet further, seventy sure. feet further, you you're you might have a flat driveway, and that solves all the problems. I mentioned I, that to Jim Casali on site that he should move his driveway down. So I will mention that again to him because, like you said, septic, it's flat. <laughs> the proposed septics in that area, though. That well, as long as they stay above and the I think septic, you're giving yourself less room to work with. A couple feet of drop, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Russ, I, what, I, have, I have to hold on, hold on, Chris. What did you say? I said if they keep, if they just have the driveway above the septic, the septic can be, you know, just below the driveway. Um, you know, they may end up still with only a foot or two in elevation drop in, on the travel portion. Sarah, what did I you say? It looks like that would push the property over and they wouldn't have that much to work with to build, though. No, he's talking going towards the school. The other way? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I understand what you're saying. And Rob, did you say something? Yeah, I I have to leave the meeting. Okay. So. Good night. Good night, Good night Rob. So I'm gonna see Chris for Rob going forward. Um. So that's it. You you know what we're looking for. Yep. I mean, he's a good engineer. I bet you he's so busy. He. Uh, he is. He needs he needs to sit down and really put the details on this, you know, okay. for we'll do. Okay. And thank then, you so much. Yeah. And then we could we could see you next meeting where we have to make a decision one way or the other. Okay. I'm not opposed to this. I just want to make sure it's done right. It has the the makings of being a really nice, well done property, but it also has the makings of being a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And and we all for for the applicants, for the engineer, we all want to stay away from nightmares. Uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. You too. Hey, your next item: Board of Selectmen proposal. For Conservation Commission merger. Well, as I said, if nobody wants to pick this up, we're wasting our time, which is why I didn't go to the meeting. You know, you know that song by uh, Casey Musgraves, Deeper Well. I'm tired of people wasting my time <laughs> as I get older. Um, if nobody's willing to pick this up, I, I don't know what the commission wants wants to do. But somebody on the commission has to take the charge of doing what conservation commissions do. And I did my research. I, I'm working with Brookfield right now on a project I have in Brookfield. So I'm before their commission. And I asked their enforcement officer about their conservation commission. And their conservation commission is very busy. And this is why. Their conservation commission manages all the open space in town. They don't have a land trust like we do. So all the open space in town is managed by, by the Conservation Commission. We, Roxbury, the town, has very little open space owned by the town, and we're fortunate for that. We have some, but there's really not much to manage. Um, you know, the Conservation Commission is part of an education commission, so they educate people. They send out brochures. They, they take... Uh, stock of how much open space is in the town and log that, log where the open space is and decide what is important open space. And they recommend to the Board of Selectmen in the town as to what properties the town should be looking to buy. Now, the town does have an open space fund. Not sure what, what's in it, but I think about a million bucks. And we haven't really spent it in decades. We keep putting into it. But I think that one day there will be a critical property that comes for sale and we'll be thankful we saved. But I'd like to know what the commission wants to do because we need to make a decision tonight. Is there somebody on the commission who wants to take charge of the conservation uh, requirements? 
Um, Does anyone would... know what the Conservation Commission thinks? Because they have to agree as well, right? Well, Pat went to them. They're not interested anymore in doing that. They, they want to become a sustainability group and just do that. There's no state law that says you have to have a conservation commission. So it's up to a town whether it wants to have a conservation commission. Oh, I spoke with someone on the conservation commission. I was under the impression that they wanted to remain the conservation commission. No. I guess true. not. That's why we're here. We wouldn't be here if they wanted to oh, remain. So they're the, the ones place. who got the ball rolling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a meeting um, two weeks ago, I guess, with with um, yeah, I uh, got there a little bit late, and I tried to enter, and I wasn't able to. So oh, I've okay. I've read about it. I just didn't really. I just spoke with somebody from the conservation commission, and I guess they have different information. Yeah, I, so uh, Russ, I don't know if our meeting was recorded or if there were minutes. I, I don't I don't know how much of that you um were privy to, uh, but. Um, you know, it was an informative discussion. You know, Gail was on the call and and shared quite a bit of information for us. Um, I, as you said, you know, we have a very active and very um, strong, and we're very blessed with the um, Roxbury Land Trust, right? Which which is a huge asset for us. Um, the, you know, is there a role for conservation? Likely, but the fact that um, you know, they're, they're, they're stepping away from that and, and forming something else. Um, it does create a challenge for us to try to, um, you know, manage that workload in addition to, you know, what we already do. And as you say, someone has to spearhead it and it's a separate meeting. It's a separate agenda. It's a separate work effort as, as, although it would be combined wetlands and conservation, Gail explained that it really is, separate um and so yeah I, I i didn't realize that i did take the 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 um the to do to reach out to conservation to understand what they had done and um be sure i understood you know kind of what the mission going forward would be and and also get with the the land trust i did chat a little bit with the president of the land trust who happens to be on this call tonight and um you know shared a bit of information along with the the planning of conservation and development within the town. I did not get with the head of conservation. They just weren't available. I did reach out, but was not able to connect. So yeah, she's um, very busy. She, I know she's busy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did ask her if she wanted to join the wetland commission, but she she's too busy. Yeah, she's she's very good. I guess she's got other. So anyway, the 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 net of it is, you know, I, I'm with you, Russ. Um, at this time, I think if um, by saying that we we will not pick it up today, I I don't know that that means forever. That, that things may change in the future. I don't know. Um, I, I think in the future it could be revisited if there was a need, um, and, and we could do that at that time. That's right. So somebody want to make a motion. What would the motion be, Russ? Did I the take motion this would be that the Roxbury Wetland Inland Wetland Commission is not interested in joining as a conservation commission. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's behind us. And no, nothing is is forever, as you know, Kathy. So. Yeah, somebody might want to take this on in the future, and there might be a need in the future. I don't know. But right now, we, we, we've got our hands full. So, <clears throat> And we will move on to new business, Dwayne and Bonnie Murray. 124 Wellers Bridge Road, construction of a five-bedroom dwelling. I think I met Dwayne and Bonnie a while back. Um, yes, you did. Ah, oh, okay. I know who you are then. Yeah. Yeah. We walked the property back there. So this is an existing house. Um, and they want to put a second house on the lot. This is further in. There's already a dirt road uh, there, an old woods road. Um, it is above the river. 
This is right before Mike Patterson's house, right before the bridge, a couple houses up from the bridge on the right-hand side going down. Um, and so I'll let Dwayne go from there. Well, let's see, Brian, is Brian on tonight? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, there. <laughs> Maybe Brian can help me out with this. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, this is the plan that I drew up. It was approved by the health district for a septic installation. Um, shows a proposed house site, the septic uh, driveway, um, tie into an existing well that's on the property, and connection to the existing barn with, uh, with power. So I've noted the uh, limited disturbance at 100 feet off the river. That's the line of the sill fence. Uh, down toward the, the bottom of the plan. And um, there's a, a dry well proposed uh, below the house uh, where all the roof drains would go into. We did uh, some soil and perk tests there. Uh, it's very good sand and gravel soil. It's got very good drainage characteristics. So we'll be able to use the, um, the dry well to handle any runoff coming from the house itself. Um, so, I mean, I can answer any questions regarding that. Yeah, Joe, Julie, yeah. Go more on the proposed house, um, that area with the, with the, there you go, yeah. Now, Brian, there's some wetlands I saw. Aren't there wetlands? Not on the, uh, the majority of the property. There's, there's maybe some wetlands down by the river, possibly. Oh, okay. It's pretty so much a... It's a I high and dry site, basically. Yeah, okay. And Brian, I'm sorry, I missed it. How far away from the river? Um, I've got the limited disturbance labeled at 100 feet from the edge of the river to the edge of the silt fence line. Uh, that would be the limited disturbance, you know, where the silt fence line is down below the house and septic. So, Brian, this is only a portion of the property that you're showing here on this map? Correct. That's right. The, house, the existing house is up right near the road. All right. Can, can um, we get a um, another map with the entire property just so I can orient myself on there? You want um, to zoom what? out, Julie? Well, this plan just showed the immediate, you know, the existing barn right. and the house site. Um, existing house is, if you're looking at the plan, to the right of the existing barn. Uh, it's actually very close to the road. Yeah, I, I I still like to see the entire lot to see how everything fits. Um, I don't know if there's a, no, a site plan. Overall site plan is on the uh, um, is on the submittal or not? Mm -mm. This is it. Yeah, I submitted the septic plan for the the proposed house. Um, it doesn't show the entire lot. It just concentrates on proposed construction. The, um, the house is, follows the, the driveway out toward the road. The house is very, very close to the road. Um, but it doesn't show on this particular plan. Yeah, is that something you can get for us, though? Um, I can't do it right now. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah. I can, that could be submitted if you want to have that for the record for the next meeting or something. I can submit mm -hmm. that. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. we require that with all our. We just did that with another site. We need to see it. We need a map with the whole site. Okay. We can't look at feasible and prudent alternatives uh, if we don't know how big the site is and what what the other portions are. Yeah. Well, if we were meeting somewhere, I could get it to you. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Any questions from the commission for Brian? Uh, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm sorry if I misunderstood, Russ. Did you say you already walked this property? Uh, many months ago, they asked me to come look. Uh, okay. Just as a feasibility, you know, is this is this something we could do? And my answer always is, that's going to be up to the commission, but 
it, it could be doable. I can't speak for anybody else on the commission, but it, it might be worth submitting an application and and uh, getting the answers question and seeing where the commission comes down. And Kathy, as, as you you know, you know from just starting to do site walks and stuff, hard to tell this stuff unless you really go look at it. The map yeah. doesn't say it all. Can you uh, schedule a site walk for the before the next meeting? Yeah, I'll schedule okay. it. Uh, I'm sure the land use has contact with Dwayne where I could text him or something and then just yes. let him know. Sure. Um, and then, then we'll figure out, is there somebody interested on the commission who wants to go see this? And it doesn't need to be just one person. We, we could do it in, you know, one or two times with different people if you're all interested. Um, but I, I do, I, I'm going to go look at it again, but I need other people to see it. Yeah, I'd be happy to go. Yeah. Pardon? Chris? Yeah, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be happy to go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Same here. Kathy? So John and Kathy? Yeah. yeah. I just wonder about parking if when we go. Where should we park? Um, In this driveway. There's a lot of parking by the barn. Pa park by the barn? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of parking. A lot of parking. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So we're going to have to do this in two sets, Dwayne, because uh, the law doesn't, if we have more than uh, two people, it's a meeting and we have to post the meeting and then anybody from the public could come on your property um, to look. So we don't like getting into that. So we're going to have to do it in two shifts. I'll do it with Chris. John will do it with um, Kathy and I'll, I'll, schedule, I'll just be your one guy to, to coordinate with. Okay. okay. Sure. All right. So we'll see you next month. I'll be in touch. All right. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just make sure um, Julie has your cell phone number so I can text you and stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We're going to Minor Bridge Road. Everybody is familiar with this application. Um, yes. 65 Minor Bridge Road. Uh, it came in a few months ago. We had a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. Our our engineers couldn't couldn't didn't have enough information to even give a price. So the application was withdrawn. Uh, Paul Shemansky, the engineer of record, came in last month, um, or was it two months ago, whatever, he he presented the pl a plan, a different plan where the house was moved back a little and more, more uh, drainage, a couple changes. So here's where we're at. We have to treat this as a brand new application. We can't look at it as the old one. Um, we still have to do site walks. And we have an engineer, Steve Trinkus, who's been hired to review this. And Michael Klein, an environmental scientist who's been hired to review this. The cost of that is uh, based on our town ordinance is borne by the applicant. Um, we don't have to give them a price or anything, but I don't think that's fair not to at least let them know how much. So I've asked Paul Shemansky to send the package so Julie doesn't have to get wrapped up in it. Send the package to... Uh, Steve and to Mike, uh, both Steve and Mike said they're willing to do this. They they are uh, they have the time, um, so they're on board. So Paul will send the packets to them, and then they're going to have our reports by our July twenty third meeting. Um, the commission has a couple things to decide tonight after we listen to Paul's presentation. Uh, you know. Do we call for a public hearing? Uh, is it a significant activity? Do we do that now or do we wait till the next meeting? Uh, my, myself, I think you wait till the next meeting so you have enough information 
to determine whether it's a significant uh, activity or not, because you really don't know until your, until your engineers tell you uh, if there are major problems or not. Uh, but that's really up to the commission. You could call it significant activity based on the fact that the 200 foot bet, uh, setback, uh, all the construction is within that. Um, and so tonight you're just going to accept the application. So what you're looking for is, is the application complete enough to let it go to the next step? That's what you're looking for tonight. Um, there, there's obviously a lot more information that'll come in at the next meeting when we have our, our experts look at it. I want to remind the commission of a couple of things with applications such as this. Remember, you can't email each other on this stuff. Can't talk about it. Uh, it's very important. If anybody does an FOI request and you have a, you have to submit your emails uh, and you were emailing somebody, it'll get thrown right out. Can't do it. Uh, so refrain, refrain from that. If you have questions, you direct your questions to the land use office, to Julie, and she will forward your question to either me, if the question's about the uh, process, or, or to, the, uh, to our experts. When you have experts, you can't dismiss what they're saying. So if you disagree with one of the experts or with Mr. Shemansky, you can't just say, I don't agree with what you're saying. You have to state why you don't agree. You can't outright just say, I, I just don't trust this. I don't agree with it. Um, you don't have to agree with them, though. That the courts have ruled on that. You, you don't have to, just because an expert says there won't be an impact, doesn't mean you have to accept that. But if you don't accept it, then you have to state the reason why. And it doesn't necessarily have to be scientific because the uh, wetland commissions weren't set up to be, science, be man, man and woman by all scientists. So if anybody has any questions, let me know about the process. But for tonight, we're going to listen to Mr. Shemansky. Keep in mind, is, is this a complete application or is it missing so much data that we need to even bring it forward? You need to make that determination tonight because if there isn't enough information, then you don't have to accept the application. You could deny it as being incomplete and give the reason without prejudice and give the reasons why you think it's incomplete. Then we will set up the site walks and go from there. Any questions? Okay, Paul, you're up. Hey, good evening for the record. Paul Smansky, professional engineer, representing the applicant, by the we. Um, as we discussed at the uh, informal discussion at the last meeting, um, we have done a significant additional field work um, even since the last informal discussion meeting in which we located all of the mature trees on down gradient of our limit of disturbance. So uh, what you see on this map here, uh, which is our sedimentation erosion control plan, um, we've now field located and performed field topography on the down gradient side of our activities uh, between both Camp Brook and the Chapaug River, AKA Lake Lilanona. So you can see the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees that are to be preserved. Um, similar to the last application, uh, we have 100 feet from our limit of disturbance uh, to the river itself. Um, if you recall, as part of our prior application, um, our disturbances were significantly closer. This was due to the fact that we had grading and drainage uh, within 100 feet of Lake Lilanona. What we've done with this revised plan is we've maintained a 100-foot buffer along the entire 4,500 lineal feet of Lake Lilanona and the Chapaug River. It kind of flows into the lake, so to speak. Um, so that that has now remained undisturbed in its entirety, that 100-foot buffer. Uh, we've also added, as we discussed as part of our informal presentation, a retaining wall on the down gradient side of the proposed house. This provides a physical barrier between the 100 foot limit of disturbance and the lake itself so that it alleviates and significantly decreases 
any potential for creep of activities around the house in a down gradient manner into that undisturbed buffer that we are proposing. Um, as we noted a month ago, we had significantly uh, increased the size of our drainage system and converted it to a recharger system as that was some of the comments of the commission as part of the prior application. Um, at last month's meeting, we had discussed that it was approximately 20 to 30% smaller than the drainage that was proposed as part of the Rondina application that was approved back in 2006. Um, as part of that project, they had proposed 93,000 square feet of impervious surfaces. Um, we're at just over one third of that at 33,000. Um, so although we have one third of the impervious surface, we've proposed the same amount of recharge and drainage as was proposed on that plan. Um, in comparison to that prior plan, we were able to significantly decrease the limit of disturbance. We're under four acres in size. Um, we have less impervious surface within 200 feet uh, of the wetlands and Lake Lilanona. Uh, and as I said, we have no disturbance. Overall, we're only disturbing 2.6% of the property. We did submit a map uh, showing the property in its entirety, um, which includes all of the uh, brooks, intermittent water courses, and upland review areas. That map there is just a comparison to the prior 2006 approval. Um, the, that is shown in orange. As you can see, the driveway actually came uh, and went through another wetland system. There was a direct disturbance as part of that application. Um, and the green cross hatch is our proposed development. Uh, we also included the stormwater management plan, uh, the grading plan. Um, we included the, oh, that right there. Oh, you want to go through these quick? Julie, the just so I, yeah, that would be great. Then I can just show the commission okay. what was submitted. Um, so what this shows is just a side-by-side -side comparison of the prior application at the same scale as our proposed application uh, with the 200-foot upland review area overlaid, just so you can see how we're able to decrease the disturbances within that upland review area. What I'm going to do prior to the site walk, we've started staking out uh, the limit of disturbance that was previously approved compared to this limit of disturbance just so the commission can see how we were able to improve upon that 2006 plan significantly. If you go to the next sheet, well, Julie. Uh, yeah. Could we stop here? So if people have yeah. questions, but I want to. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I don't want you to go through the whole thing and then we forget what we want. Yeah, no have. worries. No worries. So so could, could you, uh, Julie, bring up the one with the trees on it? So, Paul, this is showing trees that will remain. Um, yeah. Is there a map showing, or for the site walk, could we get trees that are going to be cut down flagged so we get a sense of yeah. what trees are going to go? Yeah, yeah, and that's shown on this plan as well. So if you zoom in, in the uh, area of the proposed home, Julie, you can see we mm -hmm. mark those with red X's. See those there? Right where the tree is with the solid cross hatching. It may take a while to develop a uh, load. See the X's over the trees. Yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah. right, and then we'll we'll yeah, flag those as where well. The house is. Yeah. Yeah, and so okay. we'll flag those for us, and then we'll put the limit of disturbance so that you guys can see all the trees on the down gradient side. Obviously, are not being touched. But the ones I, I'm not really concerned about where the house. Well, yeah, you should flag the ones where the house is, but I'm concerned about down gradient on the lake. Yeah. The hey, Paul, thing that, I want that to one area. You, Sorry, Russ. Yeah. The second thing I want to tell you is because I don't want you wasting your time um, or, or your client's time. But we don't care about the 2006 approval. It, it means nothing to this application. As you know, the stormwater uh, guidance document has been massively upgraded, very different today than it was in 2006. It was a different commission. It didn't have the training that this commission has. And things were much different in 2006. It's almost 20 years ago. I was on the commission. John, were you on? No. no. So nobody was on the commission but me at the time. So you could blame me <laughs> for approving something that probably shouldn't have been approved. But, um, but we learned. 
And we all on this commission, some of us have been on for decades now, have learned a lot. I want to evaluate this application fairly and based on its own merit. I don't care about 2006. If you want to take the time and spend the money to show me what 2006 would have looked like, it's not going to change my mind about this application. I'm going to I'm looking at this application on its own merit, and I'm going to listen to all the experts. I really want to be fair to your client on this. I really do. Um, I understand what they want to do here. And as you know, Paul, I've always been an advocate for people's rights to their property. I think wetland commissions have to, have to tread that fine line between people's property rights and what they want to do on their property with protection of wetlands. And if it's a 50-50 split, wetlands is always gonna win that battle. But, and that's where I come from. So, and I think a lot of people on this commission, I can't speak for them, but I think they feel the same way. They own houses, they, you know, they, they understand. And I think what your clients wanna do is a great thing, a family compound. I, I would love it if they'd invite me and my family, but you know, I think it's a wonderful, um, thing, uh, an idea that they have, a dream that they have. So, but I'm going to judge this on its own merit. Don't waste your time on 2006. I don't know if anybody on the co uh, commission feels the same way about that. Well, if I can just address that comment quickly, Russ. So yeah. the, the re reason that I'm providing that is because one of our experts is our attorney and there's case law of which I've been integrally involved in, in another town um, in which it is extremely important to look at what was previously approved on the property. Um, there, And I'm not going to speak to it. I'll have our attorney speak to it and provide a letter for the commission as it relates to uh, case law, especially as it relates to wetlands and uh, looking at previous approvals and change in circumstances. So if the property is in, in the case law, and I'm just speaking to this as an engineer and being integrally involved in the prior appeals uh, on a particular application in Washington. Um, but what the court found in that case and what they've found in prior cases was that if the site was relatively similar, such that the topography was the same, the amount of trees was the same, the amount of the land itself was changed, and there hadn't been a change in circumstances. Um, what the court found in that case in which I was involved in in the prior cases um, was that uh, basically, the commission, and I'll have our attorney speak to this, um, has to review that um, because if there's not a change in circumstances and the disturbances are, are less or similar to what was previously approved, um, in essence, that, that approval needs to be regranted. So I'm not going to speak to the legalese of it, but I just wanted you to know very quickly the reason why I have incorporated this comparison because from a legal perspective um we we feel that well, was that, important that was, to provide. You know, it's kind of bullying the commission and i don't appreciate this at all russ could i ask at the time to be talking about legal stuff and first of all paul the project in 2006 could not have been approved based on today's stormwater standards it couldn't have been there were different standards back then and if russ, you russ, it's this the town is afraid of court bring it on because we're not afraid of court. We will do our jobs, and fairly we will do our jobs, and we don't need to be bullied about legal things that happen. If I don't think this thing is, if I think there's an impact to that lake, then I'll go to court and fight for it. That's the bottom line. So there, I know there's court precedent in that, and I know those cases, and they're different than this. In 2000, you could not build what they wanted to build in 2006 based on today's uh, stormwater standards. It just wouldn't work. And that's a fact. So let's continue with science and with the engineers. If we got to get into the lawyers later, then great. I want to have Gail here. I, I don't I mean, want to really speak into the commission when this is the first meeting. All we're doing to see is this a complete application or not. Now, if we want to get controversial over this and get at adversarial, fine. You know, no, I, I I don't want to get adversarial, Russ, but I want right, to be treated the same as every other engineer in this town. Facts 
you you uh, just had an applicant you just had an application point. prior to this that had a similar limit of disturbance Look, to the Chabot. What happened in 2006? Be my guest. Waste your client's money. I don't care. You, it's up to you. You can do that. I'm not telling you not to do it. What I'm telling you is I don't care. What you just stated on the record that it would be a waste of my client's money. It would. Because the commission is going to evaluate this application based on its own merit. 2006 Understood. doesn't affect me in any way because it doesn't meet today's standards. 20 years ago, different people on the commission, a lot of changes since then. So have at it. But let's I'm move not forward. Looking, I'm side. not looking to be confrontational, Russ. I, I, oh, I took you. your comments so, seriously three well, or four months ago. More questions. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, Paul, go ahead and move on with the next set. Yeah, just, you know, I took your comments very seriously three or four months ago. I took note of all of them and have worked to hopefully address those. I know um, you have, so, and so there shouldn't be a problem. We'll, we'll wait yeah, for our, I'm, I'm our experts to tell us. Um, I think this sheet we already looked at, this was the uh, sedimentation, or, or this shows the uh, erosion control limit of disturbance on the down gradient side and all the trees. Can, can you point that out? Oh, the, yeah, the brown the brown line represents the limit of disturbance, Kathy. And and the, how far is that from the river? I'm sorry, it's a hundred feet from the Chapog slash Lake Lanana. And where's the two hundred foot mark? It's shown in the uh, blue line. If you you have to zoom in. So it's, if you go to the right, Julie, uh, oh, to the left, sorry. Oh, to the right. <laughs> Is there any way I can, uh... so the if you scroll in, I can show you the contour elevation. I can see the line. It's to the right of the septic pipe. Yeah, this to... map is a bit busy, Paul. We, we, we have several sheets, John, as we'll go through yeah, them. Yeah, uh, this yeah. was just showing everything, and then I have sheets that broke down everything. Yep. So, yeah, John, so the, the actual package has everything separate. There's like eight or nine sheets. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm just saying that maybe uh, to answer Kathy's question, another map would be better. Oh, oh great idea. Go to the, um, huh, go to the sedimentation <laughs> erosion control map. Great point, John. Yeah, and then if you so, as John points out on this map, we have uh, the proposed the two hundred foot upland review area line is shown in the light blue line. Yep, so that's the hundred foot to the wetlands. Uh, because those are just wetlands there. And then as Julie goes to the left and down, and then to the left, right there, that turns to the 200 foot upland review area because of the river slash lake. And then as you go across to the left, that's the 200 foot upland review area. The trees to be removed are shown with the red X and then the erosion controls, which in this case consists of two rows of silt fence backed by a row of staked hay bales is the uh, dashed uh, brown line. Okay, so so the red where the trees are being removed, that's where the house is? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I was trying to look the blue line versus the house. So it's pretty much all within? Yeah. No, no. No, there's there's a, a portion of the house that's outside of the Upland Review area. And okay. the, entire, the entire disturbance is a minimum of 100 feet from the lake. There's no disturbance within 100 feet of the lake. That's correct. Okay, just to make it clear. But yep. there is disturbance- Within 100 that. to 200 feet, that's right. correct. And yep. again, we cannot regulate a buffer area unless we see a potential for impact of the, of the uh, water course or wetland. Yeah, just so the entire, the yeah, the entire, if, on the overall map, we went through it quickly. But there's 4,500 feet of shoreline, Kathy, and we have no disturbance of 100 foot back from the shoreline. And if you look at the property in its entirety, um, there's areas where we have a thousand foot buffer along the majority of the lake and Chapalk River uh, frontage. 
Okay. I mean, there's, there's disturbance all in the house building, but you're saying that none of that impacts beyond where you're building? Is that what you're that's saying? Yes, that's correct. We're maintaining a hundred foot buffer to the lake um, and, and there will not be a significant impact to the resource. Um, we also have our ecologist report, which we provided for the record in which he evaluated our disturbances, our proposed erosion control measures, our drainage, and each of the proposed resources. Uh, he broke it down to Camp Brook, which is on the left part of the site development area, Lake Lenona and the Chapalk River, which is on the south area, and on the right, the wetland systems uh, that are that are not a river or a lake. And how do you and measure insignificant disturbance? What's insignificant? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry, Kathy. What's an insignificant disturbance? There's there's a definition in the regulation. You should read okay. it. So because it's important you understand that. Um, so we need to move on because this is really just to accept the application. We can, there's a lot of questions that'll come up when our, when our experts will give you a, a better view of, of what's going on. But in the meantime, you should take the time to look at these. these we, I know that we tend to look at these just at the meetings, but this might be something you might wanna go in the town hall and take a look at the actual maps we will be meeting live on July 23rd. Obviously, um, th this warrants us sitting down because this is hard what we're doing, trying to do it this way. We will be meeting live. It'll be a hybrid so that our experts don't have to come if they don't. And, and when you do that, somebody's got to be at town hall anyway. So all of us, the commission will be at town hall. But if somebody has uh, a family matter where they really can't come live, I just want you to know there's there's going to be a hybrid. Uh, so you could join on Zoom, but I think it's important for the voting members who are going to be voting on this application, attend the meeting. So Paul, in front of the house, would you explain to me how the stormwater is being handled? You got rid of the level spreader? Yeah, if you go, if you guys want to go to the site, one of the site development sheets, that, there's a couple that are more zoomed in. Yeah, this one could function fine. So if you scroll, let me just close the unseen people. Um, so on the uh, down gradient side of the house, we now have the retaining wall, which you can see. Yeah, right where, oh, right to the left, Julie. So we have a retaining wall that's right along there. Um, to the right of that, where the proposed decks are, on the right-hand side of the home, uh, we have a series. Yep, we have a series of Coltec rechargers um, that take the roof runoff in that area, and those handle the basically the right side of the house. If you go straight up with your cursor, Julie, yeah, to the right just a little bit. Um, we're handling in that area. We're handling some of the front portion of the house runoff as well as the driveway in that area where it goes under the port co share. And then if you go all the way to the lower left-hand corner of the house off the drive, oh, up, oh, yeah, right there, there's 29 rechargers there, um, which handle the left side of the house runoff and the driveway runoff in that area as well. And what we did on the up gradient side of the, or uh, on the up side of the driveway, we have the driveway grading uh, basically to a stone line swale uh, that then discharges into a catch basin, which then discharges into the rechargers. There's two catch basins on both sides of the driveway in that area. Um, so so the no runoff. Direct, there's no direct discharge to the lake. No, the only thing that there is is a, a footing drain outlet, um, but that's it. But all of the roof runoff and the driveway runoff is captured into three three sets of rechargers now. Okay. I think we have enough information to move it forward. I agree. Kathy? I mean, you got to go through the whole set of plans, which I have. I think there's enough information to, to bring this to them, to our uh, experts. Paul, have you sent it to them? Or what, could you do no, it No, not yet. I'm going to put that package together for them. Yeah. And based okay. on your comments tonight, I'll provide some additional supplementary information that may take a couple of days. 
Yeah, you told me there was a certain drainage calculations that Steve may want. If I were you, it's up to you, but if I were you, I'd throw the kitchen be, sink in here. Be, based you know? on your commentary today, Russ, we're going to put those together. Yeah, for you. I, I no think you, hey, Paul, I'm doing my job. I, it's yeah. like I said on the last application. This is a beautiful thing. But if it's done wrong or if we have problems, it's going to be ugly for all of us, including your client. And I don't want that. And neither does anybody on the commission. It's time consuming, as you know. You know, we've had problems before, uh, not, just, not just with you, with other engineers. Have, you know, things didn't go as planned. We need to really look at this closely, all of us. And we need to make sure this thing is right. That's all I'm asking. That's it. Fair enough. All right. And then I'll let you know when everything's staked out so then you guys can coordinate um, just for insurance purposes. Someone from my office has to be out there. Well, I think we're going to have a meeting on the site. I think okay. the best way is everybody who's a voting member needs to see it. We should see it together. We'll, we'll do the public, uh, we'll do the, what do you call it, the notice, you know, the meeting on the site. I doubt anybody from the public's going to really come. Um, and I think that's the best way to do it. It's easier for you. So you don't have no, to- Oh, no, no, that's great. No, that's great. All right. It, you know, if your client has a problem, uh, I'll respect that. But um, I, I think no. it's better for all of us. We we do a meeting together. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay, good. All Sounds right. good, guys. Thanks for your time. Does anybody want to make a motion on public hearings, significant activities, or, or, or are we going to wait for the next meeting? We have 35 days to determine whether we're, we're going to have a public hearing or not. I think we should wait, Russ. Okay. Chris, are you out there? Yeah, I'm here. Do you, do you agree? Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Have what, a great evening. Be careful. What's next? Kurt, are you here, Kurt? Yes. Hi, Kurt. Hi, how you doing? Good. Listen, our commission, you know, we've had a lot of violations lately with, uh, with tree contractors. And we're trying to educate tree contractors. So because it, notice the violations are very time consuming for, for us and we're volunteers. And I just want to make sure that you know um, when you're going to cut clear cut, doesn't matter distance to wetlands, uh, under the state law, if you're clear cutting, you, you have to have a local permit to do that. Yes. And you especially have to get a permit for cutting right, right up in a wetland and in a wetland, which is what you guys did at 60 Ruckham Road, is that whole meadow there is a wet meadow considered a wetland and then you piled a whole bunch of chips right on the wetland and you were right up against the swamp. So I know you've been doing this a long time. I know your business is a good business. You have a good reputation. I just expect better from your company. Yeah. All right. So going forward, uh, we're, we're asking you to get permits. You could always call John Cody. John Cody could, could approve a lot of tree cutting on, right on the site, right on. It's a two-page inquiry form. Uh, you fill that out. He comes out within a week, and he could sign off right there. Of course, the bigger stuff, like what you did on 60 Ruckham, will probably have to come to the commission, just so you know. So am I, should I get the, am I responsible to get the permit, or is the homeowner responsible to get the permit? Uh, well, somebody has to get the permit, and it's like an electrician. If if you have to ask the homeowner, do you have a permit? Remember, state law allows us to find not only the homeowner, but also the contractor. There's an equal and several liability in that. So if you're going to do it and you're not checking with the homeowner to see the permit, in the future, Roxbury Inland Wetlands Commission is coming after everybody. We're coming after the contractors and we're coming after the homeowners. We already went after Doug. Uh, he showed up. He said what he did. He didn't understand that he needed a permit. But you as a professional have to know that. Every good tree guy I know knows all about wetland regulations, except for yeah, Governor I, I did tell Doug. I, 
Pardon? I did tell Doug, and in our contract, I, I specified that he was responsible for all the permits, and he had told me he had talked to the town and done what he needed to do to, okay. do, to do this project. Fair enough. Fair enough, Kurt. But in the future, I'd check, really make it, because we're going to start finding contractors because, you know, electricians can't do electrical work without a permit, and they wouldn't. Yes. We need the tree guys to be held up, be held to the same standards to help us. So if your tree guy, if your homeowner said, I talked to the town, he's got to have an inquiry form that's signed or he has to have a permit that's signed, just so you know. Okay. How, what is the amount of property that you do have to have a permit to be cleared? Is there a certain acreage that you have to, to have to Over have a, a quarter permit? acre. Over a quarter acre, okay. Okay, I thought it was three quarters. Okay. You thought it was what? Three quarters of an acre. That's what Newtown is. Some other towns, most of them are three quarters no, of an acre. State in, Ro in, one Rock acre. in Roxbury, it's a quarter acre. Quarter uh, acre. After um, five acres, the state, you have to get a state permit, yes. okay. a stormwater permit from the state. But you also so, have to get a local permit no matter what. Takes, okay. Usually, usually takes thirty days. Usually, we we might approve it in one meeting, but we get sixty five to approve it. Just so you understand the time. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Kurt? It's pretty obvious he he thought the homeowner had a had a permit, so there was a miscommunication. Kurt, thank you for coming in. Thank you for taking okay, the time. Thank you. You have yep. any questions, Kurt? Call John Cody. He he's there to help. He really. Yeah, is. I talked to John. I've talked to John on several occasions, and and from now on, I'll just contact John myself, so we don't have this miscommunication. Yeah, it's a better way to go. Yeah. Thank you. Kurt. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Bye. What's next? Um. Do you want to close out the NOV? Yeah. Russ. Um, okay. I make a motion to close out the notice of violation for 60 Ruckham Road. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You uh, skipped over the wetlands enforcement officer's report. If you want to well, circle wait, back. We, we have to close out another NOV, right? The one on... Uh... You have the potential... Yep, you've got 51 Mine Hill and then... Uh... You've got 63 Mine Hill. Okay, so, let's go to those quickly. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go to 51 Mine Hill. 51 Mine Hill is actually you also need to close out because you approved it last. You accepted the application at the last meeting, but there was no closeout. Right. I'll make a motion. What's the address? 50 51, 51 Mine Hill Road. I'll make a motion to close out 51 Mine Hill Road notice of violation. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next oh, one okay. on Mine Hill Road. The next one, we're going to 63 Mine Hill Road. Okay, that's uh, why I looked at that. It's it's another one of those, if they went, came to us and got a permit, we would have had to approve it. Because... The road runoff is going from behind the house, and during floods, it, it's going to flood out their whole yard if they didn't do what they did. But what they did, I, it's not the best. You know, I wish they came in because there could have been better natural things that they did. But they obviously didn't do this. Um, they didn't. They did it because it really needed to have to be done, and they they misunderstood. Uh, somebody from the town, they, they thought they had approval that they could do it. Kathy, do, do you have anything to say on this? I think you oh, accurate. I agree. I agree with what you said. Yeah. So it, it's another one of those, like all these NOVs, I, I wish they just got a permit and I still got to write up a thing for the next town newsletter. We did get a, a great picture of Garnet and Roxy today, so I'm ready to write the letter. So um, I'll make a motion to close out this NOV. Do you need to approve the after the fact application? Uh, yes, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the after the fact application. Do I have a second? I'll second. And then. Aye. 
and then uh, okay. and and then I'll make a motion to close out the NOV for 63 Mine Hill Road. Thank you. You'll Second. do that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You want to circle back to uh, John Cody? Go ahead, John. Make it quick. I want to walk my dog before it gets dark. Hey, good evening, everyone. John Cody for the record. Um, as far as non-regulated permits that I issued, there weren't very many. We just had a parking area for the land trust, a pole barn on Grassy Hill, generator or two, and a small bump out on Good Hill Road for a, a kitchen addition. Not much there. And uh, larger news, uh, last month or so ago, we had a complaint from Dennis McDonald about his neighbor and the stormwater runoff from from North Street that the state was doing as far as their um, culvert construction and repaving and all that stuff. It was rather complicated. We uh, had Gail McTaggart involved, and um, thankfully, uh, Gail and I went back to 1993, researched everything about the allegations that were made, and um, Gail drafted a letter to resolve this issue. Uh, the letter was actually 52 pages long. It had a bunch of attachments as far as state permits granted, state inspections, town inspections, everything like that. Um, and it certainly seems, appears like it's resolved for the moment. So um, right now we're in limbo with that and we'll see what happens with Dennis's response, but that seems to be going well. If anyone wants to hear anything about that, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, a second note was I received a complaint last week while I was on vacation uh, from Joe Caranta about his neighbor on 102 North Street, stormwater runoff from his property. Uh, what happened there was um, the homeowner had ripped off his roof, put up a new shingle shake roof, put the gutters back on, put the downspouts on, but never connected the downspouts to where they discharge into the uh, infiltrators underground. Therefore, during one of those uh, massive rainstorms, he had massive sheet flow going across the road, which affected Joe's property. Um, Joe sent a complaint. Um, I'll be looking into that this week. He has several similar allegations as far as Dennis's, but I will do some site visits this week and um, see how we can, that goes. But I'm optimistic that I can resolve this rather, hopefully rather quickly. That's pretty much it. Okay. So I have a story to tell. Um, I, I've asked Julie um, to send everybody on the commission a string of emails between me and Joe Caranta. Uh, John received a complaint from Mr. Caranta a couple of weeks ago uh, with a video. Uh, we approved an application for the house across the street. That's the big white house that's being refurbished. We approved cutting down the three or four maple trees in front. And we had a two inch rainfall and I think it was an hour and three quarters. And rightly so, there was silty water crossing 199 and going into the brook on Mr. Caranta's property. Uh, I thank Mr. Caranta for filing the complaint because it was a valid complaint. What, what it makes it hard with Joe is it came with a page and a half paragraph of demanding the stormwater control plan and this and that. Well, John went out, asked the neighbor, would you please put up erosion control? What had happened was they're redoing the roof. So they had the whole roof drainage system apart. And then you get hit with two inches in a short time. And all that water, instead of going where it was properly directed in the past, went down the driveway and just, just silted up. Um, Silty water went across the road. Um, the next day, the neighbor, who, who's a new person in town, a very, uh, very nice person, uh, had a beautiful erosion control up, a silk fence back with hay bales. It was beautiful. So um, John reported back to Joe that, you know, erosion control's been put up. This, this is settled. And Joe, Joe's email on the show says, thank you. I, I appreciate it. So... The next day, the neighbor goes across the street. Joe's out there. I guess he was gardening or doing something. I'm not really sure what. And said, hey, where's your silt fence? You don't have a silt fence. So I guess they had a little argument. So then Joe emails me and John and demands all this stuff. Stormwater control plan. The commission should have never uh, 
done, uh, approved this. And I told Joe, we're not, the Wetland Commission will not get involved in neighbor squabbles. We will not. And end the story, it's over. And of course, the emails continued. Um, then he decided to turn his sights on Mark Lowe's property and join up with Mr. McDonald. So let me explain there. A uh, couple months ago, Je Dennis had complained to the state uh, deep that the Wetland Commission and the, and the town wasn't doing anything about several zoning and wetland violations on Mr. Lowe's property. The state investigated it and came back that the town did nothing wrong and is doing nothing wrong and that everything is proper. That wasn't enough. Dennis filed another complaint with the town. Patrick very wisely hands it over to Gail because that's what we need to do now. Gail wrote this amazing 40 page, it was a work of legal art. It was a 40 page letter that showed every approval and backed it up. The, the thing had all kinds of backup. The letter clearly showed that the town since 1993, and I wasn't sure, I was surprised, I'm surprised, but we did everything right. Uh, and that there were no issues. Well, apparently when Mr. Caranta got a hold of the letter, that wasn't enough for him. So he has now filed a complaint with the state. And from what I hear, I don't know whether this is hearsay or not, but against the Wetland Commission and against me as a chairman. And uh, I don't know what I did wrong, but we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see. I, I think the state will, will see this for what it is. Um, and then he wrote me an email that I should resign. I should resign from the commission. And then he wrote an email to Pat saying that he's interested in joining the commission for the vacancy that is open. Um, you can't make this stuff up. First of all, I want to say publicly that uh, I'm not resigning. I'll go when I want to go. I think I've earned it. Um, I'm Actually, I was going to retire in a little while, but now Joe and Dennis just invigorated me. So they're stuck with me for 10 more years. That's what I'm doing, 10 more. Um, it could have been a couple months, but no. <laughs> uh, secondly, um, I want to introduce you to Deirdre Daly. Deirdre is uh, the, our planning commission um, chairman. She's an amazing person. Uh, has an amazing life story, very hardworking woman, owns her own business, uh, worked it from the ground up, uh, very straightforward. I like her straightforwardness. Um, and so I put word out that I'm looking for somebody to join the commission, but this was a long time ago that I did this. Had nothing to do with Joe. Um, I asked the current chairman of the Conservation Commission if she was interested. She said, no, you know, she's too busy. Um, and then Deirdre stepped up, told me she's interested and would like to join. So I explained everything to her and she's willing and able. Um, so now what she needs to do is submit a request to, uh, to the Board of Selectmen. I, I, I abstain from those votes. It'll be up to Pat and uh, Kim, but I think Deirdre is a good choice to fill the vacancy. Um, I think Joe, is a smart guy. Uh, it's unfortunate that he chooses to just take the paths that he takes, but certainly I can't have somebody like that on a commission who's going to disrupt the commission. We have a very strong commission. It's recognized as one of the best in the state by environmental groups and by DEEP itself. Uh, people at DEEP are always telling me, you guys do a good job down there. Um, Dennis and Joe wanted to have a public hearing uh, to have all this out, but here's the thing. There's no such thing as a public hearing to complain about a commission or about a person on the commission. That goes to the first selectman as it should. The first selectman should vet it. It shouldn't be out in the public that people could throw stuff at a volunteer without any evidence that that volunteer did anything wrong or that a commission did anything wrong. So they were both told that there were there is no public participation in wetland meetings. 
The only time that happens is when the commission decides that there is a public hearing. All enforcement is done by the land use department. I don't know of any wetland commission that opens up a public hearing for somebody to come in and complain about their neighbors. It's just not right and it won't happen in Roxbury. So I wanted to be on record as to why there's not public participation. Um, people are welcome to come and listen to meetings, but they can't talk about somebody's application unless it's their application. And that, that's what the, what the regulations are. And that's the way it is. So um, read the emails. And if anybody on the commission feels that it should go further and that you would like to learn more from Mr. Caranta and Mr. McDonald, uh, I don't want to shut them out if the commission feels that there's something there. But I'll leave it to you. Um, I'll leave it to the commission. So you're going to have the emails and, and you'll see what it's all about. Okay. Is there anything else, Julie? No, that's it. Uh, I just want to welcome Deirdre and I look forward to working with you. I'm, I'm sure that Pat and Kim uh, will put you on, but it's up to them. And uh, the next meeting is going to be hybrid. So let's, let's everybody try to make it. Okay. Sounds and good. I'll, in touch about uh, through through the land use office on about the site visit meeting on Minor Bridge Road. Yep. Great. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Okay. I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Russ.